Okay, good. I hereby call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Tuxedo University School District on this Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we take a roll call? David Ward. Here. Alyssa Horner. Kimberly Bryan. Here. Dan Pasticone. Here. Bill Gibbons. Here. Gary Hefner. Here. Heather Kidder. A quorum is present. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second? I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Right now, we're going to do. We're going to certify the budget vote and election results. Um, any discussion? I'm going to read it. Read the motion to you. The motion is to certify the results of the budget vote election, including Proposition One, 2023, 2024 expenditure budget, as well as Proposition Two, capital reserve spending. Motion to certify William Clark having received the top number of votes in the election. Do I have a motion? Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Does the clerk need to verify anything? It's just instead of you know we're reading the numbers randomly. I want the public to know it's like the clerk. Yeah, and we posted it. it on the website as well. Yeah, but, but if you, you, you would you like her to read it out loud or something? Sign something or verify something as the clerk. I signed everything last night on the main form. I submitted it. What well, to approve? It for so, okay, to so for the people, so for people watching, all these numbers we're about to read are correct. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, okay, congratulations all. to, to uh, for the to, to everybody getting the propositions approved, and to Mr. Clark for being a new member of our board, replacing me. Um, right now, do we have any public comments? Anybody in the audience? Oh, we do. I'd ask you to to say who you are and I guess where you live. This is the first public comment we've had in a while, so. Um, <laughs> Ms. Hines, if you could uh, introduce yourself. Hello, you gotta forgive me a little bit. I have lost my voice for the most part. Um, I'm Michelle Hines, I'm the senior class advisor for Tuxedo, and I just wanted to let everybody know that if you are not doing anything on Monday, from 3 to 9 p.m., we are doing a dine to donate at Characters Restaurant. So 15% uh, of the proceeds will go towards our senior class and our senior class trip, and all of our fun activities. So just wanted to throw that out there so everybody knows. So thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. I think I saw another hand back there. All right, no public comments, so we'll move on. I'd like now to introduce the superintendent of schools, Jeffrey T. White, to present the administrator's report. Good evening. White. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it warms my heart to see you all here in a community board meeting tonight. Thank you all for coming. I also want to thank uh, the community for supporting the district's 2023-24 uh, budget. It passed by a rate of about 74%, and for supporting our capital project proposition, which passed by almost 70%. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, thank you to the community, thank you to the Board of Education for all their support and uh, guidance through the process. And Anthony Kasharis, where are you there, Anthony, for all his hard work in preparing our budget? So thank you, sir. Um, I want to ask everyone's indulgences tonight with our agenda, uh, as we'll be recognizing um, our some some scholarships and scholar athletes, and some of them are on their way back from a game. So soon, as soon as they're here, I ask that, as always, we put our students first. So we'll try to get that done right away. Uh, just a little update on the uh, uh, the farms project, Tuxedo Farms. Our attorney uh, continues to petition the uh, related properties legal counsel for the. Uh, Definitive agreement supposed to provide to us uh, all year, which we haven't gotten yet. Um, so they're saying that they're assuring us that everything is fine. We just need to discuss some fine details. But this is an ongoing thing, but we are following up on that. Congratulations to our STEM teachers, Marco Margata and Mariah Klimowicz, for winning STEM classroom grants from Orange and Rockland. This marks the eighth year George F. Baker and fourth year George Grant Mason has re received these awards. Outstanding work to these two teachers, these two faculty members. I'm also thrilled tonight that we're going to be recommending three outstanding teachers for tenure this evening. Ms. Valerie Moy, 
a library media specialist, Ms. Jenna Park, English 712, and Laura Sobel, Mathematics 7 to 12. So we have quite a bit of an agenda here, so I'm not going to continue. Uh, there's quite a bit going on. It's towards the end of the school year, but I think we're going to move on with the agenda. If anybody has any other questions or, or anything, nope. we're all good. Now we're going to move on to our consent agenda. These are a series of actions the board takes. We put them all together. So just for the sake of time, the board and the community gets this public. It's on, the, on our website. Lots of questions go back and forth. So what I'm going to ask the, um, the board right now, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? For personnel? No. For I'd, everything? I'd like to uh, Would you like to pull something? that motion and pull out 5.5 and 6.4. All right, let me write them down. 5.5. And what was the other one? 6.4. 6.4. 6.8. 6.8. 6.6. Uh-oh, 6.6. Gary? I had some, but they were already, they've already been <laughs> in the mix. That's okay. okay. I'm, I'm following real fast. We'll put a little mark okay. next to them. Just that one of some of the minutes were wrong on our mixing Bill and my names. So that's, you want to put, it has to be correct, but I think it'd be on consent. The correction can be on consent. So okay. I'm not pulling it out. I'm just okay. putting on the record that the last of the three minutes, there was some Hebner given to like Bill Hebner and Gary Gibbons. Well, that, do you right. got that? Yeah, that's all. So okay. it's still on consent. All right, so we have four that we've pulled out. So do I have a motion to approve the amended uh, consent agenda? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, there are no nays. All right, let's see what we got here. We got uh, 5.5. <clears throat> this 5.5 is the appointment of APPR lead evaluators. Uh, Mr. Castrocone, would you like to talk about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused about it. First, I, I didn't see in here exactly what it, it's going to cost. Um, then I was wondering about the approval process for our um, evaluators. I, I'm confused about what, what needs to be by an independent person, what could be what's done by the principal. Um, if the principal from the elementary school could evaluate the teachers in the high school and vice versa, if we needed an independent or somebody who doesn't work with them every day, I'd just like a little more information about the whole process and what this is. Sure. Mr. Merrill, do you want to talk a little bit about that? And actually, Roy and Dolores, why don't you join? I apologize. I could not hear uh, the question, Mr. Castricone. The 5.5, uh, the appointment of the APPR evaluators, right? First, I'm wondering, like, what does this cost to have these independent people come in? And if the reason for having them come in is because we need someone who's independent, who doesn't work with the teacher every day, could, you know, Mrs. Uh, Terlecki review the high school teachers and Mr. Reese review the elementary school teachers and then compare notes? Or, like, do we really need outside people to do this? That, all right, so APPR stands for Annual Professional Performance Review. It's an evaluation process that school districts in New York State have for teachers and principals. You have to be certified to do what the board has to certify. Now, uh, the district's APPR plan, for probationary teachers, you have to have a lead evaluator. That typically is a principal. You have to have, you can come up. Mr. Reese, you have to have uh, so a lead evaluator announced, a lead evaluator unannounced. Then for what we call iterator reliability, you have to have an independent announced evaluation and an independent unannounced evaluation. You're correct, Mr. Castricone. The principals could switch. Mrs. Trelecki could go to the high school and do the high school teachers. Mr. Reese could go to the elementary school and do the elementary teachers. Our problem right now is we're in crunch time. You're coming to the end of the year. There's a lot of exams. And the two building administrators simply don't have, I don't think, enough time. I don't want to speak for you, but uh, enough time to do this. Dr. Cogliano, 35-year administrator in Washingtonville and in Greenwood Lake, uh, very familiar with doing these things. Uh, myself, for many years, I'm going in and doing the independent announced and unannounced for the staff. 
uh, for an inter inter reliability uh, uh, portion of it. Um, also, uh, Mr. Mayorhoff, I'd like to say um, is that Dr. Cagliano is already here serving as our PPS person. Mm -hmm. So this is also a good way of hit for him. He's, he's going through our, our, uh, our special ed program. Right. So it's a good way for him to get to know the teachers and get to know what's going on in the classrooms. That's critical. And also, Mary Stephanie Corsones is a BOCES, is a, someone from BOCES who's working with us on our new elementary math program. So in addition to helping us uh, pick an elementary program, she's getting in the classrooms and she's doing uh, ev evaluations or, you know, of, uh, the, during the math session. So we're understanding what's going on in, uh, during the math classes because we're going to be adopting a whole new math curriculum and she needs to get a good wrap around that because they're going to be providing a lot of um, training, professional development to over the next year or two to make sure that that math program is a, is a complete success. So for our tenured teachers, they need a lead evaluator, but they also need an independent uh, uh, evaluation, again, for that inter reliability. So then what happens is uh, these evaluations generate a score, a heady score for the teachers so that we can say our teachers are highly qualified instructors, <coughs> and we report that to the state. So if these evaluations are not done, then we're not in compliance with state regs and are actually our own APPR plan that uh, the district negotiated with uh, the union. What's the deadline to get this done as a school year? <sighs> Basically, the end of the school year. So what happened was, for the last few years, the state has given us, um, or, or given you know, all school districts, a reprieve because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but now, again, we're required to, to do all of these. Um, and, and we just also had a change to our APPR uh, negotiated instrument with the union because the state, if you recall, I think I put this in a board gram, they pulled out their fourth grade science. So we had to go through the whole APPR plan again and pull those things out. We had to go through it with the mm -hmm. teachers union, the administrators union, and we had to work with... Uh, an attorney at the state education department as well. So it was quite a bit of work uh, getting through all that stuff, but, uh, but here we are. We're going to make the target by the end of the year. They're yeah. going to start auditing these programs going forward to make sure that schools are abiding by it because APPR is part of the law of the land. It was required. Uh, we have to do these evaluations of teachers and administrators as part of, uh, you know, when, when the whole thing with the race to the top happened, they required... Uh, but they didn't require, but Common Core came into being, and so did APPR. So that's what we're doing right there with that. And these are the uh, all the lead evaluators that we're going to have. So uh, again, I'll, I'll ask the question: What does it cost, and where, what budget line does this come out of? The extra people. So the uh, Ed is here, and you know what line he's in. He's he's been here. Um, we've got uh, Roy and Dolores are doing theirs. And uh, Mary Corsones, Mary Stephanie Corsones, is coming out of a BOCES uh, budget, which we have for the math program. So that's out of a BOCES code. Um, and Mike Cogliano, we're paying Mike as our PPS person. That's coming out of a title grant. So what will it cost? I don't have the total cost off the top of my head, but I can get that for you. I'm comfortable voting for it. Unless that's I know okay. What it's cost. Why? Understood. Ms. Corazon's coming out of a math a math line. I know it's a uh, BOCES, uh, BOCES, uh, BOCES, BOCES code. Yes, yeah, part of our as part of our mathematics uh, program. Yeah, she's doing the evaluations that way. But are we yep. shortchanging it, a math program because of that? Nope. No, I think that this is helpful because she's getting to see firsthand what our our teachers are doing and what they're you know where they might need some assistance. So nope. So it's all built into the We're budget kind of that jam, we've though, got. Right? It's not any additional cost. All right, so give us just a general idea on how many hours and how many, how, just a, off the top of your head, what this would cost. Let's take, pick one, one of the four. Um, how many hours do you think this is going to take you folks to do all of this? Well, oh, goodness. Most yeah, most of them are done. That's the answer to that question. Not all of my non tenured staff are They're done immediately. They need two. So every observation, it takes approximately one hour for a, a, le a little less, for pre observation. Then the actual observation is another almost 15 minutes. Then the writing of the observation, and then the post 
come the post observation. So we're talking three and a half to four hours per person per observation. Yeah. So that's a tremendous amount of work. I have 11 untenured staff and I have to see them twice. So that's a lot of hours to, to see. So eight hours per, per teacher approximately. Right. Let me just stop you. So this has to be completed by when? June. June. Yeah, so the end of June. Almost done. I mean, certainly with, with the requirements that we The have. principals are almost done with their, for the probationary teachers, uh, they've done theirs. But the probationary teachers also need a announced independent and an unannounced independent. Right, so let, let, me, let me just, this is really not the way to do it, the way we're doing it right now. Um, we're, we're approving, like, Mary Stephanie Corsons. Is she doing her observations already? She will be starting, though. I don't think she has, has no, she? she? No, she hasn't started those. She's here today. She's doing the training for the elementary staff on the new math program that we're looking. And she wants to, it's really a win-win, because she's going to go in and observe all the teachers doing a math lesson. Mrs. Telecki, I'm not... I, I, I'm sure you guys, this is perfect. I mean, I'm really glad we're doing the evaluation. It's just the process. We're being asked to approve something. We don't know what it costs. And we don't know, uh, be, be, in other words, we put a budget together. It's a zero-based budget. We have things put in the budget. Now we're being told. Yeah, we'll, we'll you know, be I'm with I'm trying you. to be provocative here. Oh, I. This is not the way. I, I'm with you. I mean, I, there's, there's concerns about consultants formed in the district. And there's a new item on the agenda that I know nothing about. And I don't know what it's going to cost. And we're just trying to toe the line. That's, that's so right. I'm going to make a suggestion. It, it will be within the budget. It will be within, well, within the budget. Suggestion. Why don't we, the ones that we don't have, why don't we table this till next meeting? Next meeting is June, and then I think it'll be a little too late for us to late. get these things accomplished. So putting aside this year, it sounds like we're in a jam. Next year, is there a way to do this without bringing in third-party consultants? Is there a way to do it with the existing staff? Yes. Yes, yeah, we'll is. do. Yes, we will do that. I, again, this is really not the, I mean, not you guys, but this is not the way to do it. I mean, you've got to come in here and give us a document and tell us what, what it's going to cost, how many hours, um, even what the, uh, uh, who, who these people are. And I have a question. And yeah. should this not be happening all throughout the year and not just being left to the last month of the school year? Yes, typically uh, you should start your evaluations and observations at the end of September, beginning of October. So why didn't we do that? We did. We did do that. Every, um, I forget, you have to be recertified. I'm not quite sure, Mrs. Brion. I think it's every two years. Yep. You have to be recertified. And BOCES hadn't offered the recertification class, if I understand and we're doing correctly. It, we're recertifying again in August. Um, because we have to do this continually. BOCES comes in and trains all the administrators to certify us to be able to observe staff. <clears throat> so this year you're going to be on top of it. Yes. Well, we actually started, I, mean, I, I don't want to speak for Mr. Reese, but I actually started mine in October. Okay. And then, so, yeah. All right, so what we're hearing. So, the ones so, you could do. You could, yeah, there's yeah, a, there's, there's a, what so we're hearing. what's the practical do. outcome right. if we vote no as a board? Um, we may not hit our deadline. And what, what results from that? Uh, well, uh, the state will do their audit and we won't be compliant. So, and we can't, we can't certify that our teachers are heady or highly qualified instructor, instructors and that gets published in the newspapers. So, uh, it really would be unfair to the teachers, um, because in my opinion, they are highly qualified uh, instructors. But you know who it's unfair to? It's unfair to us because we're I doing agree. the oversight. I agree, Mr. Ricard. And, and, uh, I'm reminded of the uh, first day of contracts law when they said, you know, your money or your life is not a contract. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're kind of in that situation mm -hmm. here. So mm -hmm. I withdraw my objection. I'll vote for it. And uh, we'll do better right. next time. All right. Do we yeah. want to do this as one motion or we want to do each one individually? We need to do each one individually. Do we? Uh, no. Oh, the, not the people. No, the people. Oh. No, uh, do them all at once. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the appointment of these APPR lead evaluators? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Alyssa, uh, Miss Horner, are you on? On? No. Okay. Do you want us yet? No. Nope. Okay. 
All right, let's go to 6.44. Approval of the extension agreements for human uh, resources consultant services. Ms. Breland, I think you were the one who brought nope. that up. Was I think no, it was, that was, uh, yes. that was me. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I've been asking for, uh, I guess, the last three meetings to see a, kind of an org chart on who exactly is doing what. I'm very concerned about the number of uh, consultants that we have. In the document that was presented in the board docs, some of the um, duties in the contract were listed as duties that uh, Mrs. Murphy is now doing. Um, so I'm, uh, I would like to motion that we table this until we can get more information about who is doing um, who is doing what, what our org chart looks like, how many consultants we have, and what we're up to here. Well, let me. We did agree last meeting that we would have a full presentation on all the consultants, and we were going to do that in July. We, did, we talked about that last week. So it now, seems okay. Well, but we this did. doesn't change anything what you're saying for these matters. So before I can keep talking, why don't you answer or respond to what Mr. Catricone is saying? Uh, Ms. Horniff, let the record show Ms. Horniff is now here. Yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, so I'm sorry, Dan. Say that again. What, what, what's the question specifically? You want me to restate it or you want to? You want to? I'll state it again. Um, for the last several meetings, I've been looking for an org chart so I could see exactly who all the consultants are and what they're all doing. We seem to be pretty consultant heavy. I think it's mature to vote to accept contracts of two human resources consultants, especially when one of the contracts that we're approving states that. Uh, the person who's filling that position is doing the same duties that Mrs. Murphy is doing. It actually states in the contract that they will do them until we find someone to fill the slots that Mrs. Murphy has filled. So I'd like to table this until at least the next meeting when we get some more information. Maybe we can have that presentation on what all the consultants are doing. And, uh, before and just, you know, this is a small district. We don't typically, we don't have the same size staff that a typical school district has. So we have to re rely on certain people. And consultants is something we have to define. For example, the Board of Cooperative Educational Services, or the BOCES, exists to provide services to districts that they could provide on their own. So for example, we don't have a, uh, a director. We had not had a director of technology, so we got someone through BOCES. Um, they, we only buy a certain number of hours from that person. Uh, because to pay somebody a full salary is not something that the district could afford. So it's very affordable to do it through BOCES, and we also get 38.5% aid back. So it's it's very affordable way of getting very high quality people. And for example, the technology, when we first got here two years ago, the, the, the network was in a very bad shape, and we have completely turned that around. So. We will go over all of these in July, but I don't want people to think that we're consultant heavy. We're a small district. We're lean and mean. But to get the required services that we do need, we have to sometimes go out to get that expertise. We don't have the salaries here that to afford someone that a larger district could do that. So we pay a very small amount, and we get high quality uh, so, people. Right. So I'm not going to be here, but in July, it's a definite. This is going to be a formal presentation about all the consultants. And Correct. I think it's, it should be terrific, you know, information and whatever. I, what I want to, before Mr. Givens brings it up, what happens if we don't agree to uh, approve this, this particular we, we could table it and put it on for next month, and we'll, we'll, we'll make the adjustments to the contract. Right. But so did, yeah. Because we could vote on this if, you, if it was an urgency. But you're saying we can wait another. If you want to wait, we could wait. Okay, yeah. we'll do that. All right, let's go to, I guess yeah. we have a motion so then, for that. We have yeah. a motion to table. Yeah, Someone I got needs it. To Hold second. on a second. Yeah, I have some of the same concerns, but just to be clear, at least personally, I'm not anti-consultants because we've had this discussion before. And before the issue that came up for the first time about the APPR lead evaluator, which is more consulting contracts, We've had, I think, generally concerns about it, those are existing, by the way, Gary. Yeah, those are, they're not new new consultants. They're, you know they're I mean, existing new, people. New, yeah, right. New jobs for them to do, so to speak. Because if I might be convinced, I'm trying to keep an open mind that all these consultants are great. Maybe we need more of them, but it's just very hard to track without an org chart 
where they fit into the budget. And sure. That's some even, of them, I, I think we've had good ones with good results, so maybe we need more. Oh, we've had some outstanding results. I'm not convinced results, yeah. I understand the workings of what percentage they're doing of what a full-time person would do versus all those sure. ideas. Sure, so, absolutely. Yeah, so and like Dr. 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 Well, he's he's giving. Yeah. He's actually giving a requirement. In addition to giving all the financials, you should have an org chart, too, so that everybody can see. Absolutely. Um, just uh, let me get my two cents, because I'm not going to be here. Um, and Gary, you're right. We've had some great successes, like Dr. Cusin with the nine-period day. We had a presentation on that. So each one of them has been doing outstanding work. Right, so that's not the yeah. issue. I'm not saying they've done right. bad, bad people or bad work. My concern is just... I don't understand it enough if we're supposed to be the Absolutely. oversight to understand what percentage of what job they're doing well, that would be otherwise done by who. I want but, you to be totally comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, I, let me just make one, finish the discussion. I, I would be, and I'm not going to be here in July, but we don't want to hire full-time staff when we don't need to hire full-time staff. Um, this is a small district. We have three key people. We have two principals and a superintendent. Now we have a business officer, now we have a clerk but, and a secretary, but where we, in the past we've had full-time workers in these jobs. And if we can avoid that and get top talent, which we are, um, I would leave that as a, hopefully a legacy uh, when I leave. So um, with that in mind, and if there's no more discussion, I'd like to make a motion to table this. And you'd be seconding mine. Yeah, I'll be seconding it. And yeah. all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. All right, let's go to 6.6. .6. We're going to stay in order. Yeah, was this the thing that I questioned in the email today about going into executive session? No, that's something else, right? This is the MOA? 6.6, .6. no, no, you're, um, yeah. Oh, this yes. is the yes. MOA? No, this is the thing we were going to go into exec, but the attorney so contacted me earlier. So then be in here. Well, I just got contacted by the attorney before the meeting, so. Right. Uh, so the, so I think we're tabling. That. We're tabling that we're tabling one. Right. Yep. Okay. Do we so need that's to table it not officially. Or? Yep. Okay. You so make I'll a motion. Make a motion to table, to table it. it. Second. Yep. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All those opposed. Aye. I want to leave with a perfect record. Good You're perfect. Thank you. And for the record, the attorney expected to have that for you tonight, and at the last minute, she called and said, "Nope, we have to table it for a later date." All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our last one. Uh, this is six point eight. Approval of the business office reports and. Yes, I think this is a softball question, but I'll ask it nonetheless. <laughs> okay. We'll see. So doing the math, I think we are, we have 12% of the budget year left of the fiscal year. We have 4% budget left. So I just want to get a good comfort level that the encumbrances are in. We kind of know where we're gliding to, and we're going to finish the year all right and in the black. Yes, Mr. Kashara, do you want to talk about where we are? fund balance. That's before we appropriate about 500000 to taxes. I think we're going to be a little higher than that, maybe 1.2, uh, but that takes into account what you see here, the unencumbered balances. There'll be a few things we're going to write off, you know, to, to expense before the year ends. So you think it'll be $100,000 more than what we we projected, yeah. What we uh, to the good. Okay. All right, yep. So we can sleep well for the next month and a half. Yeah, and yeah. Anthony, yeah. don't give them the good too. news now, then they're going to expect it more, you know? It's tight to me. That's why I. It, it's, 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 we, we have been, we've done, tried to do as good a job as we can encumbering things yep. there, and uh, we feel pretty good that we will end in that range this year. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Then we can and hire uh, another. And we know where you live, Mr. Kashara. <laughs> <laughs> we know where you live. Go <laughs> <laughs> notice. All right. Yeah, yeah so I'm uh, I'm good. Um, yeah, make I'll make a, the motion to approve. Six, we got eight. a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I think a bunch Still of kids no, came no nays, and we can move on. All right. Now we get to the good stuff: student recognition. So we're going to turn that over to Mr. White. Five minutes. Okay. Can we? Uh, you know what? I think if you don't mind, we'll wait the five minutes. The, the, the team will be here shortly. Coaches? Oh, they're here. Oh, terrific. All right. Let's go to it then. All right. First, uh, can, can I hear from Mr. Margata? Who's going to do? Oh, you're waiting for a student? Okay. So... We can move to Earth Day. In the meantime, Day. we'll work. We'll move to Earth Day. All 
Saturday. Okay, on Earth Day, Saturday, April 22nd, the Interact uh, Student Council uh, and Environmental Club students participated in cleaning up litter along uh, Route 17 in Tuxedo uh, and the Honor Society, National Honor Society. Many bags of trash were collected in order to keep Tuxedo beautiful. So that's terrific. Thank you all for that. Congratulations to Mark Stankevich, the Art Club, uh, for painting around town. On the 22nd of this month, students brought color and life to several windows and businesses, the post office and the elementary school for the spring window painting. The GGM art students will be in the art show at Tuxedo Park Library this month from May 4th through the 30th. Mark Stankevich says congratulations to the students for showing their fine artwork and creativity. In concert with the PTO, Mark Stankevich sent an artwork from every student in GGM to the fundraiser, Art to Remember. Students created artwork that can be printed on mugs, shirts, lunch boxes, and more. They look great. All right. We can, take, uh, we can move to the acceptance of a library kit donation. Yes, you can All do right. that. If I'm going to need a little explanation. Is this the gentleman we're waiting for? No. <laughs> okay. All right, let me read this, and then we'll get a little explanation here. Um, we're still happy to see you, Christian. <laughs> a little free library kit was donated by the Ramapo Valley Rotary Club to their sponsoring Tuxedo High School Interact Club. The high school interactors constructed the library kit and tuxedo, uh, Tuxedo's art kit along with the elementary students uh, will paint the interior and exterior. The library's purpose is to be a catalyst for building community, inspiring readers, and expanding book access. The plan is for the little free library to be installed near the um, cafeteria at the Mason Elementary School. Um, you want to talk about this a little bit more and expand on it? I think you covered it, Joe. Right. I think you got it. All right. So I, do I have a motion to accept the donation of a uh, free library kit donated by the Ramapo Valley Rotary Club and donation of Norway saplings? from the Ramapo <laughs> Rotary Club for our elementary students in honor of Arbor Day. <laughs> I'll make a motion, but I'd like to have a little discussion first, okay, yeah, believe I, it or I, not. I was hoping we would. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be a member of the Ramapo Valley Rotary for the last seven years. We meet every Friday at 1230 upstairs at Rhodes, unless the weather is really nice, and then we'll meet outside on the back deck. The function of the Rotary is, uh, you know, service before self. Basically, all we do is we uh, have a nice meeting with friends. We raise money, and then we give it away. And I would encourage anyone from the community who could use a little bit of that in their life to come on a Friday afternoon at 1230 to Rhodes and sit in on a Rotary meeting and see if it's something that you might want to be part of because it's been uh, a great part of my life. I really enjoy it. Dan, I, I think you owe us a happy dollar now. Perhaps I do, yes. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about the Nor Norway saplings, Miss Breland. Is that your group? Well, today is sitting a my, but no. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the rotary also. That's is that a rotary. today or tomorrow? Oh, right, good. Today. Oh. Sitting a oh, my is 17th of May, the Independence Day for Norway. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't tomorrow something, too? Or? No. Would you <laughs> um, make a motion? Festivity. I would love to make a motion to approve that. Second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All those... Opposed? No one. All right. Um, there's something I'd like to read to you, and, and Mr. Castricone, you could talk about this too. Uh, congratulations to the interactors who presented on April 27th to the Suffering Rotary Club meeting at the Salvation Army. Students presented a year in view, review slideshow of the 40 activities and events that the Interact students participated in. Suffering Rotary Club, who sponsors the Tuxedo Interact Club, along with the Ramapo Valley Rotary Club, um, donated 100 Norway spruce saplings for all of our elementary students to plant in, in honor of Arbor Day. Congratulations to the interactors who presented on April 27th. Um, I think, oh, I, we have some names here. Um, students, Diana Nara Vasquez, J Jake uh, Sandek, Juliana Scanlon, Camila, Camila uh, Granillo, Maya McColgan, uh, Frank DeGenero, and Alex Scully presented the year in review slideshow, uh, which we just talked about. Any comments uh, on this one? Nope, you did a great right. job, There's Joe. There's no motion on this one either. All right. So we're still waiting for that recognition. I think we ought to get started. What okay, do you say? that sounds good. All right, we'll start with the scholarships first. How's that? Is that okay, Mr. Morgana? We'll start with scholarships, then we'll work our way over. 
Okay, thank you to the Tuxedo Scholarship Committee for selecting this year's recipients of the prestigious college level awards. We're happy to announce the following students who have been chosen for these special honors. Congratulations to Reginald, and forgive me Reginald, I'm going to mess your last name up, Juance, for being selected as this year's 2023 Rensselaer Medal recipient and for receiving the University of Rochester's George Eastman Young Leaders Award. The Rensselaer Polytech Institute Medal awarded annually to one student in any given high school is designated to recognize the student's strength and success in the fields of mathematics and science. Medalists who apply are admitted to and enrolled at Rensselaer are awarded a scholarship worth $30,000 per year. The University of Rochester's George Eastman Award is given to a student who displays outstanding leadership traits and who has the potential to become a member of a select tradition at Rochester. So congratulations to Reginald. Is he here? Are you here, Reginald? Where are you? Stand up. There he is. All right. Why don't you come up here for a second? Let's see. Mr. Wanse. All right, next, congratulations to Jake Sandek. Where are you, Jake? Stand up. All right. Jake has been awarded the Clarkson University Leadership Award. This award recognizes high school juniors who demonstrate strong leadership qualities positively impact their school and local community, and have a proven academic record. This award is $25,000 per year for a total of $100,000 over four years of attendance. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Come on up, Jake. Come on up. Wow. Okay, next, R the University of Rochester's Xerox Award. This award recognizes a student who shows strong interest and displays talent in pursuit of innovative approaches, along with an appreciation for the possibility of technology. This goes to Dominic. Dominic, where are you? He's not here? Well, let's give him a round of applause anyway. Okay, is, Mar is Marley Vaught here? She's not here either, okay. Congratulations to Marley Vaught on receiving the University of Rochester's Frederick Douglass Susan B. Anthony Award. This award is named in honor of two Rochester's most significant pioneers of social justice and recognizes a commitment to understanding and addressing difficult social issues. So again, congratulations to Marley. And finally, congratulations to Veronica Chavez Granillo on receiving the University of Rochester's Bausch & Lomb Science Award. This award recognizes outstanding achievement and superior intellectual promise in the field of science. Veronica, where are you? Yeah. Come on up. Margot, are you ready yet? Okay. Just, Mr. White, before you move on, I, I believe you left out one of the gentleman's last name. It was Dominic Seishan, I think. Oh, pronounced that right. Well, I want to make sure that. Uh, okay, Dominic Seishan. Which forgive guy, me. Dominic, got the award. So you know what it is? I, you see them, you know them by the I first name. Every, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out, Dad. Come on up, Marco. Ladies and gentlemen, Marco Margata is our athletic director, and he is going to. Take over from here. Go ahead, Marco. And we also have our assistant athletic director, Mrs. Hines. Hi, right, good evening, everyone. So I'm going to kind of rearrange things a little bit as we still wait on one of the students. So we're going to start with the um, um, awards a little quickly. Oops. 
a little differently. So good evening, everyone. Tonight, we'd like to acknowledge um, our student athletes for all their work in our varsity sports, for their scholastic achievements, as well as their athletic performance throughout the 22-23 school year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the coaches, and then they're going to be presented uh, their players with a certificate. Um, and then um, what I'll do is I'll have them line up in front of the camera right here. So I would just wait till you hold your applause until the entire team is up here. And then if you want to take a team picture, you can do that as well, too. So at this point, I'd like to call up the Marcy Cross Country Coach, Mr. Billy Brunner. So this year's cross country team had the largest team to date. Uh, for a team score for the first time since the team has been in existence. Uh, this team was also awarded the recipient of the fall New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Team. And um, to start off with the players on the team, uh, first player is Chima Oparaji. Next, we have Kevin DeClaire. <laughs> Next, we have Jack Riley. Oh my gosh, they're all so tall. Next, we have Will Sandak. Justin Grafeo. <laughs> and last, Sam Kanansky. <laughs> so congratulations to the boys um, cross country team. If, if you guys want to wait, anybody wants to come up and take a quick picture, they may do so. All right, thank you, boys. Uh, next, we'd like to recognize the Varsity Boys basketball team. This year's team was also awarded the, uh, the recipient of the Winter New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Team. The team also received uh, award in sportsmanship by the Orange County Athletic League Association. Um, and at the end of the season, they had two boys on the team that were awarded the, um, the all-star for the respective OCIA County Division. And those two players were Jimmy Reedy and Sean Ahsoka. So you guys can stand up real quick. <laughs> uh, and next I'd like to call up Coach Takeuchi. And again, I'll call up all the players, and then you guys can line up over here. We'll start with Jimmy Reedy. <laughs> Sean Ahsoka. Shane Bellow. <laughs> Jake Sandak. <laughs> Mark. 
Michael McCogan. Uh, Anthony Arone. Matthew Gillio. And Mo Berthy. Just a couple quick points. Oh, sure. Just a couple quick points. Um, just a note about this team, just in case anyone wasn't aware. This is the first time we ran a varsity team in about five years, and I can just tell you firsthand, this was a good team that had a lot of, showed a lot of commitment and uh, persevered through the entire season. They stayed together. They played hard. And a lot of people are very proud of them. Uh, Coach Takeuchi, I know Mr. Reese is very proud of him as well, too. So this is a great group of guys, um, and hopefully they'll start the spark for getting guys back into basketball and continuing the tradition of uh, tuxedo basketball. So nice job, guys. Okay, so last um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the girls volleyball team. Um, one of the things just to mention, this volleyball team did very well this year. Um, they were Division Five champions this year, and they competed against uh, some tough teams in Class C, and also was able to win games against Chester and Burke. Okay, at the end of the season, this team had two girls that were named to the Section Nine Class D All Star team. Uh, I'm going to mention their names, and they can stand up after I do. Juliana Scanlon was named first team All-Star. And Vanessa... And Vanessa Duarte was named to second team All-Star. So if those two players could stand up. Uh, that team was also awarded the New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Team. Their overall GPA as a varsity team was 96.7, which is an amazing accomplishment and the epitome of what a student athlete should strive to be. Just in case we don't know, I'll introduce their coach, Ms. Hines. And as before, we'll just have everyone come up, receive their certificate and stand over here. We'll start with Juliana Scanlon. Uh, Anastasia Vizquiznaya. <laughs> Dianara Vasquez. Vanessa Duarte. <laughs> Madison Marsh. Casey Wanse. (laughs) 
Veronica Chavez. And is Maya McCogan here? No. And I saw. Okay. <laughs> and then finally, Alex Scully. Congratulations to this year's volleyball team. <laughs> so let me just end by saying this. I would appreciate everyone showing up tonight and showing your support for all these teams. I appreciate that, and thank you. <laughs> now, before, I, before we adjourn the meeting, um, we have another person to recognize. Actually, a couple people to recognize. One is Mr. Morgata, and I think you were, to, were going to an award on Thursday night. That's right. Mr. Morgata is going to be recognized by the Mid-Hudson School Study Council for all the great work he's done as one of our faculty members. He's um, Mr. Margata is the reason we, well, the main reason that we've gotten our STEM Excellence Award here at George F. Baker, and soon we'll have, with the help of uh, Mrs. Klimowicz, that we'll, we'll have the elementary uh, STEM Award as well soon. And they just got, uh, as I mentioned before, two uh, scholarships from Orange and Rockland, or two awards, rather, from Orange and Rockland. So he's done quite a bit uh, in his time. And now he's our athletic director, and he's done such great things with us. He's gotten us uh, to combine teams with Suffern and also with Burke Catholic. And he's got another one up his sleeve coming soon, right? Excellent. You're doing a great job, Mr. Margotta. Thank you so much. As I Mrs. Hines, Mrs. Hines, thank you very much. Uh, while we're all, what, since just, we're recognizing. If you don't mind, Joe, I'm just going to, one more thing. Is that okay? I, I want to thank the great faculty that we have. And uh, even though it was on the agenda earlier, I'd like to call up, Mrs. Sobel couldn't be here. I'd like to call up Valerie Moy and Jenna Park, who got tenure tonight. Congratulations. Very good. That's a very, very good. Listen, before we adjourn, do we have any public comments? This will be the final comments. Okay, with that, I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All those in uh, second? You got, we got a second, right? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations to everybody. Have a great night. We'll see you. The agenda, and we got hey, um, We rolled through. This was quite a. <laughs> By the way, a hundred thousand dollars on that budget. <laughs>